Okay, this is the chapter four online quiz for physics 102. Uh, battery consists of an ideal EMF source of 12 volts. Uh, however, when a current of uh, 4 amps flows from the battery, the actual potential difference is 10 volts. What is the internal resistance of the battery? Okay, well, we we'll say that V is equal to E minus I times R. And so uh, that's going to be equal to 12. Let's see, the actual potential is 10 volts minus I was 4 amps times R. And so that is going to be a half an ohm. If I solve this for R, it's equal to 0.5 ohms. Now, if I look at this, this looks something like this. I have an ideal EMF source, and then I have an internal resistance, and then I measure the actual potential. So uh, if this is 12 volts, I get a minus 2 volt drop here, and that gives me 10 volts of actual terminal voltage. What is the potential across the 8 ohm resistor? Okay, well first I want to find the equivalent resistance. That's going to be 24 ohms hooked up to a 12 volt battery. So that means that I have a current of V over R, which is 0.5 amps. All right, 0.5 amps. And then for each of these, I can find V equals IR, because each of them has 0.5 amps. So 0.5 times 4, that's 2 volts. 0.5 times 8, that's 4 volts. 0.5 times 12, that's 6 volts. Notice here that these all add up to give you 12 volts. But here I was asking for the voltage across the 8 ohm resistor. That's going to be 4 volts B. What happens to the equivalent resistance uh, as you add resistors? Oh, sorry for this. The equivalent resistance in parallel. So as you add resistors in parallel, what does it look like? I'll mark either any of these answers correct. Uh, but it meant to say in parallel. So as you add equivalent resistors in parallel, the equivalent decreases. And you can see this mathematically. So let's say that I have, for example, a 2 ohm resistor. It has an equivalent of 2 ohms. But then if I add another 2 ohm resistor, it's going to be 1 over 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. That's equal to 1. So you see the equivalent resistance actually decreases. Um, now, the uh, you can also think about this intuitively. The current coming along here has a certain number of paths. It has one, two, three paths. All right, if you add more paths, then that means that the uh, overall resistance will decrease. Okay, in this circuit, what happens to the voltage? Okay, in this circuit, what happens to the voltage in each resistor as you add resistors in parallel? There are parallel circuits. Each branch is independent. So this one is independent of this one. So if there's a voltage V here, I have a voltage V here, 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 and here. They're all the same. Resistors in parallel act as independent circuits. So the voltage stays the same. Now, you could ask a different question. What happens to the current in each resistor? And the current in each resistor would stay the same. But what happens to the total current here? This current, as you add resistors in parallel, would increase the total current because it's equal to the sum of all of these currents. The following circuit is relevant for next four questions. What is the equivalent resistance? Okay, well first, I have to find the equivalent of this. That's 1 over 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2, and that's equal to 1. So I can replace this with a 1 ohm resistor. And then if I replace find these two resistors, that's going to be a 2 ohm resistor, and then these two would also be a 2 ohm resistor. So if I redraw this now, I have two 2 ohm resistors in parallel, and then of course the equivalent of that I've already found is equal to 1 ohm. So the equivalent resistance is 1 ohm. So the next question is, what is the potential across R3? Let's go back up here. So R3 Notice here I have 12 volts. That means I have 12 volts here and 12 volts here on those two 2 ohm resistors. Now if I have 12 volts there, remember both of these actually were made up of two 1 ohm resistors. 
could redraw it to look like this. Since these are identical resistors, they both carry 6 volts. Right? They're identical, so they split that 12 ohms, uh, that 12 volts equally, so they both carry 6 volts. Now let's see, I was looking for the voltage, I think, across yeah, R3. So there's one more step that we have to take. All right, so this is the equivalent of R3 and R4. Since R3 and R4 are both in parallel, they have the same as this resistor. So they each carry 6 volts. So as it stands, actually, we have 6 volts here, 6 volts here, 6 volts here. Every resistor has 6 volts across it. All right, so the answer for this one is uh, 6 volts. For the circuit, if R3 is removed from the circuit, what happens to the current through R1? All right, so let's see here. If I remove R3, so I take out R3, what happens to the current here? Well, remember, parallel branches are independent. So if I do anything to this branch, it's not going to impact this branch at all. Now, it will impact the total current here. Let's ask that question. But the answer to that question that we just asked is that it will not affect the current through R1. But what will happen to the overall current? And that question is closely related to what happens to this current if I remove R3. If I remove R3 here, the equivalent resistance of this branch goes up. All right? It was 1. Now it's going to be 2. That means that the current here is going to go down, and this total current will also go down. But this current will remain unaffected. It will remain the same. So it remains the same. Which resistor has the least current traveling through it? Right, let's go back up. All right, which resistor has the least current traveling through it? Let's erase all this scribble scratch. The least current. All right, well, we all know that they all have the 6 volts. So right, we could just go through and just ask. All right, if they all have 6 volts, which one, what is the current? And I is equal to V over R, so this is going to have 6 amps. 6 amps. They're in series, so they should have the same. 6 amps, 3 amps, 3 amps. That's 6 over 2, 6 over 2. All the others are 6 over 1. Um, and so the one with the least current has to be either R3 or R4, so we'll see which one was listed. I think it was R3. Uh, you can think of it also that I have this current that comes up, by the way, I'm going to have 12 amps coming here that will split here into 6 amps and 6 amps. They'll go through there. Here it splits again, 3 amps and 3 amps. And then it comes back together over here as 6 amps. Okay, so let's see what our options were. Remember R3 and R4 both had 3 amps. Uh, that's going to be R3 was B. What is the current in this circuit? Okay, you have to use the loop rule for this. Let's just choose a direction for the current choose a direction for the current. We'll say it goes in that direction. And then I'll choose a direction to go through the circuit. I'll go in, no, no, let's do it differently. Let's go in this direction. And just for an exercise. And then I'll say 12 volts is positive because I'm increasing in energy. Uh, plus 2i is positive because I'm going against the current. Minus 18. See, remember our, our electrons come along here and they lose energy. Plus 6.6i plus 1i. That's all equal to 0. That is the loop rule. It's just a single loop circuit, but we can still apply the loop rule. Loop rule. So that's negative 6 plus 9.6i equals 0. So i is equal to 6 over 9.6 amps. What is that? That's about 2 thirds. So 0.63 must be the answer. Uh, and notice that it came out positive. That means that when I chose this direction for the current, I actually chose it correctly. If it came out negative, then I would have known that I'd chosen it incorrectly. All right. Which of the following equations for this circuit is correct? Okay, well here you just want to start with each equation and ask yourself the question, are all these values correct? So here I have minus 6. Here's my 6-volt battery. To be negative, that means it has to be going in this direction. Uh, minus 8i1. Okay, that doesn't jive, so that one's not. 6 minus 8i1. So 
So it's going here, going in this direction. 6 minus 8i1. Good so far. All right, because uh, I'm going with the current, so it's negative. Plus 2i2. That was good. I'm going against the current, so it's positive. Minus 12. I'm ramping down, so they're losing energy, so that's correct. Minus 4i1. I'm going with the current. I right, said so this one is correct. Let's just look at these others as well, though. Here, take the junction rule. Incoming currents are I1 and I2. Outgoing currents are I3. If you look down at this junction, you'll find the incoming to be I3 and the outgoing to be I1 and I2, so it looks the same. But that's not what C says, uh, so that can't be right. Here on D, I have 12 minus 2I2. Let's erase them all what we have here. Uh, 12 minus 2i2 is going here. So far, so good. Minus 8i1. Okay, that should be positive 8i1. Minus 6, that's correct. Minus 4i1. And again, that should be positive to be correct. So that's not the right answer. So B has to be correct. Consider the above circuit. If i2 equals 2.45 amps, what is the magnitude and direction of i3? Okay, so I know i2 now. So it becomes pretty simple. And I'm looking for, what am I looking for? I3. So I2 equals 2.45. Let's get rid of some of this. Uh, and I want to know I3. So in order to find I3, I'm going to look at this left equation. All right, so I'm going to start here and go in this direction. So that's going to be 12 minus 2I2. I'm going to go and put in what I know to be 2I2. 2.45 minus 3i3 equals 0. So that's 12 minus 4.9, 7.1 minus 3i3 equals 0. So i3 equals negative 7.1 divided by negative 3. So that is equal to uh, 2 point something. 2.37 amps. And it came out positive, so that means that I3 is clockwise. 2.37 amps clockwise. That is positive, so it's as labeled. Just pause here for a second. Okay, so let's see, 2.37 amps, so that's 2.37 amps down. If you recall, I said clockwise, but that's also going to be in a downward direction. Okay. Um, what is magnitude and current of I1 in this circuit? Okay, this is a multi-loop circuit. It might be difficult uh, if you choose the wrong loop. So, for example, if I choose this top loop, I have two unknowns, and it's fairly complicated for me to find it. But notice if I choose the big loop, it's really simple. Let's do the big loop. I'm going to start here, and I'll go in this direction. That's going to be minus 40. Coming up here, minus 20i1 equals 0. Right, so that means that i1 equals 2 amps. So see, very simple, actually. Uh, so 2 amps is the right answer. Which of these equations describes this circuit correctly? Okay, very similar to what we had before. I'm going to start here, minus 80i3, minus 1i3, minus 30, that's correct, as I'm ramping down, minus 20i2, that's correct, minus 40, and that's correct. Okay, so A is the right answer. I'll leave you to go through the others. The RC circuit consists of a 1 meg ohm and a capacitor 4 microfarads. Assume Capacitor is completely charged by a battery of 2 volts. How long will the capacitor require to fully discharge? Okay, well, first we need to find the time constant. The time constant is just equal to R times C. That's 1 mega ohm times 4 microfarads. That's equal to 4 seconds. Notice that mega is 10 to the 6 and micro is 10 to the minus 6. So those cancel out. I don't need to convert them to SI units. And so 10 tau is the time to fully charge, so that's going to equal to 40 seconds, right? So you have to find your time constant, but then realize that it's 10 times your time constant, because the time to fully charge or discharge. 
Okay, time constant is one second. One second, resistance 10 milligrams. What is the capacitance? Okay, with tau is equal to RC. One second is equal to 10 mega ohms of C. Uh, 10 times 0 0.1, to 0 0.1 microfarads. You can convert all these to SI units, or you could just say, well, 10 times 0 0.1 is 1, but it has to be micro to cancel out with mega. All right, so it's 0 0.1 microfarads. Circuit breaker, you have these devices, then you add a fourth device, and it kicks off. Remember, a circuit breaker turns off if your current exceeds a maximum allowed value. So let's first find the current. We know that P equals VI. Uh, they're all operating at 120 volts. And so I can find the current is just going to be P over V. So that's going to be uh, P over V, 1200 over 120. That's 10 amps, 1 amp, and 1 amp. So, so far I have 12 amps. But then I come along and I plug in a 4 amp device. So that gives me a maximum of 16 amps. And that's when the circuit breaker kicks off, or somewhere between 12 and 16 amps. Uh, in this case, it's going to be 15, which is a common circuit breaker maximum allowed current, but it doesn't have to be 15 for the sake of a problem. It could be 17 or 24 or whatever I wanted it to be. But in this case, it was 15. Third prong of electrical outlet provides which of these? Provides an alternate ground. What does GSAI do? That checks to see if I in is greater than I out. This would be the third prong or the ground. Uh, and this would be the circuit breaker. Be careful because the GSAI looks a lot like the circuit breaker, but it's actually quite different in how it operates and in what it does. Which of these statements about a household circuit is true? Okay, household circuit is a parallel. They do not operate at the same current. They operate at the same voltage. Uh, as you have more devices, the potential across each device decreases. That's not true. There's really nothing you could do to that. They all have the same potential. And this is not true. You could say that it's for a GFI or GFCI. So it looks like just option one. All right. Uh, assume that the voltage of the battery is 9 volts. Three resistors are identical. What's the difference across each resistor? Okay. They have to all have three volts. They're identical. They should add up to 9, so they all have 3 volts. Circuit blue, what is the voltage across R1? Well, you could do this sort of the hard way and find the equivalent resistance, which is 6 ohms. And then that gives us uh, 2 amps coming through the circuit. And then we could find V equals IR for each one. So that would be 8 volts. And 2 times 2 is 4 volts. Right? And so across R1 would be 8 volts. The easier way, or it may not be easier, but you can look and see, since I know that V equals IR, the bigger resistor has to have the bigger voltage, right? Because we know that they have the same current. So this resistor is twice R2, so it has to have twice the voltage. And I know that a number that's twice another number that adds up to equal 12 are 8 and 4. That might help you on the exam, just sort of be able to look at a circuit like that and know how the voltages are distributed. Some people are, are really good at that, and some people aren't. And it's not really a matter of your intelligence, really. It's just sort of how you work with numbers. Uh, but you can do it either way. All right, in circuit below, what is the current through R1? Okay, well, it's a parallel circuit, so I have 10 volts here. I is equal to V over R. That's 10 over 5. That's equal to 2 amps. So I have 2 amps through R1. Points. P and Q are connected to a battery at fixed voltage. As more and more resistors are added in parallel, what happens to the total current from the circuit? Okay, well, they all have the same voltage. And let's say that they, if they're all the same resistor, then they'll all have the same current, V over R. Right? But this current coming in is the sum of all these individual currents. So as I add more and more resistors, that current, total current, will increase. Right, remember, that's what happens with your circuit breaker. You add more devices in parallel, your circuit breaker eventually kicks off. Current flows to the light bulb with the wires now connected across the bulb. What happens? Right, well, current's going to take the lowest resistance path, and the wire has a very, very low resistance, so it's going to go there. So basically, all the current is going to flow through the wire, not these other options. You know, the wire actually doesn't have a zero resistance. Uh, if it did, we would have some mathematical issues with Ohm's law. But 
uh, it does have a very, very small resistance. So practically all the current will flow through that wire. Two light bulbs are connected in series. When a wire is connected across ball B, ball A will do what? So before, this switch is open like this. And let's say if we had 12 volts here, I would have 6 volts here and 6 volts here. Now remember, power is V squared over R. Right? So if I increase the voltage, I will increase the power, keeping the resistance the same. So if I close this switch, this light bulb goes out. And now instead of 6 volts here, I get 12 volts. So I've increased the voltage by 2. I've increased the power by 4. So that means that bulb A will glow brighter than before. Four times as bright, in fact. Light bulbs are identical, the same resistance, where circuit produces more light. Okay, this one will produce more light because they'll have 12 volts here and here, whereas this one only has 6 volts here and here. So each bulb is four times as bright. So circuit 1 is the right answer. Three bulbs all have the same resistance of 1 ohm. By how much is the brightness of bulb B greater than the brightness of bulb A? Okay. Bulb B we know is going to be dimmer, so I can get rid of this, this, and this. That's not the right answer. It's because bulb B is going to be dimmer or less bright than bulb A. And by how much? We've already answered this, but let's just write it. I have 10 volts here, 5 volts here, and here. P is equal to V squared over R. My V of bulb B is half that of bulb A. So that gives me one quarter. Now be careful because you might be inclined to say, well, P equals VI. My V is one half. And so my power is also one half. But that's not taking into account because the currents here are not constant. Right? My current for ball B is also actually one half. So I get two one half terms over here, which is a quarter. So the answer is D. Be careful with these power things because um, they can come back much. All right. It's like I'm locked up again. Let me just pause for a second. Okay, continuing on. What happens to the voltage across R1 when the switch is closed? All right, so if I close this switch right here, if I close this switch, that means I am adding R2. So the equivalent resistance of this whole branch, when I add that resistor in parallel, is going to decrease. All right? That means that the voltage across this branch is also going to decrease. That means the voltage across R1 is going to increase. I see a decrease in voltage here, so I see an increase in voltage here. So the voltage across R1 will increase. What happens with the voltage across the resistor R4 when the switch is closed? All right, so we switch, close this. I've already answered this, but the equivalent resistance of this whole thing drops. That means that the voltage is also going to drop because the voltage across this entire branch will drop, and each one of these resistors, because they're in parallel, have that same voltage. Which resistor has the greatest current going through it? I assume that all the resistors are equal. Okay, so here I split my current evenly. So these both have the same current. Let's assume that I have, I don't know, 12 amps of current. So here I will have 6 amps and 6 amps. And then they come back together. Now notice here, it's not going to split evenly. I'm going to get a certain amount of current going up top. In fact, fact, it turns out if you calculate it, it's going to be 4 amps. And, but I'm going to have a bigger current going down bottom. I'm going to have 8 amps. All right? I will have uh, 2 thirds of the current going through R5 and 1 third of the current going through R3 and R4. Right? So it's going to be R5 will have the biggest current. What is the current in branch B? Okay, well here I have 5 amps. That means that I must have had 3 amps coming in here to give me this 8 amps. And now I have 2 amps going here, so I must have 6 amps here in branch B. That's the junction rule. Ammeters meters connected between points A and B. Current through the ammeter is what? Okay, this is a Wheatstone bridge. It can be drawn identically like this. Right, where you have your ammeter right here. Now, let's imagine that I have a charge coming along here. It has a certain potential. All right, 
here it sees a drop in potential of minus IR, and here it sees the same drop minus IR. So when it gets to this point and to this point, it's going to have V minus IR potential. That will be its potential. The point being that at this point and at this point, it has the same potential. So it's like a ball sitting on flat ground. All right. At one point on the flat ground, it has a certain amount of energy, and over at the other point, it's going to have the same amount of energy. So if you imagine I have this ball is sitting here, and then I have another ball sitting here, or two points, A and B. If I place a ball here, it's not going to roll over to point B because there's no difference in energy. Right? So similarly, charges are not going to travel from this point to this point, which means that my current will be zero. That's a weak stone bridge. If you're in the lab, you've dealt with a weak stone bridge. Uh, Wheatstone bridges aren't used, used that much anymore because they're kind of uh, archaic. We just have much simpler ways of measuring unknown resistances. But it's a nice illustration. Which of these equations is valid? Right, let's just take each one. 2 minus I1 minus 2I2. Right, so 2 going in this direction because it's positive, so it ramps up. Minus 1I1, that's correct so far. Minus 2I2. It okay, looks like we did not get that four ohm, so that four volt battery, so that's not correct. Uh, two minus two I1 starting here. Minus two I1. Okay, that should be one I1, so that's not correct. Uh, two minus I1. Okay, so far so good. Minus one I1. Minus four. That's correct because I'm ramping down. Minus 2i2, that's, that's our winner. So C is the right answer. I'll leave you to go through those others. All right, I think that's the end.